I really don't think this game will make it past the hype stage, and the PC port was not worth the 50 euros. Okay, tell me why you think that. I don't mind. Who did they put? They put Sonic the Hedgehog in this game, didn't they? They put Maximilian Dude in the game. I would say that was worth... I think, that was, I think that's worth 50 euros. <laughs> but I think... I, I'm actually curious. I want to know why you think that the game won't make it past the hype stage, because you might be right. You absolutely might be right. Whoa, we got an essay you delivered with the reasoning. I feel like besides two or three characters, the rest are uncharismatic. The mechanics and mana system feel lazy and basic. Combo routes are the same. Footsies don't exist beyond press roll because movement is stiff. The netcode is good, but it doesn't keep me from playing more than three or four matches due to getting bored from a visual standpoint. Would have been better as a tag fighter or team gauntlet. I'm not sure what team gauntlet is. OTG stuff is way too punishing and abusable, and Chantress full screening you. Okay, I think there are some, some strong points in there. I don't know about being uncharismatic besides two or three characters, but I actually said something similar where I said the characters are not iconic. They look very stylish. Striker, which I understand is not the final evolved form of a striker in, in the RPG. I really, I, apparently that she can get quite detailed and quite interesting. But that might be one of the reasons why characters feel a little less than iconic. Because since since they come from an RPG, it's entirely possible that they are necessarily like their base forms, which it didn't have to be like that. They could have chosen their final forms and made them their characters. A bit like Dragon Ball Fighters, which in fairness, Dragon Ball Fighters put like Goku Super Saiyan. They put Super Saiyan Goku as the base roster. You only get Goku with black hair, like a year later or something. So I think it's an interest. I think it's a, an interesting point about the characters being uncharismatic. I agreed when I say that they're not iconic, but I think as fighting game, <laughs> you're gonna love this. As functions, I think we've got everything we need here. I think the characters do exactly what they need to do. We've got. Zoners, we've got fast rushdown, we've got zoners that seem to move really fast, we've got the projectile people, we've got, I don't know, I haven't even fought an enchantress, so I don't even know what she can do, but I've seen the trailer. I assume she's a puppet character? I think it's a very filled out cast, in terms of functions. But then again, we all know that functions don't sell a game. We all played Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, right? Well, I mean, I actually assume that most people, a lot of people didn't actually play it, they just insulted it. I actually played it, and I enjoyed it. The mechanics of the mana system feel lazy and basic. I disagree. I don't think it's as unique as Undernight in Birth, which turns the whole thing on its head. Where it's just like, you want to pressure people as much as possible. In Undernight, it's like, you might actually want to not pressure all the time so that you can win the grid gauge. And also, Undernight turns things on its head by kind of rewarding you with gauge if you defend well. And eventually it will become your turn. You may have to wait a while. And you can get shield baited. And also shields, crouching shield, like, makes it harder to stand up in time to block an overhead, so... Okay, there's a lot of things about Undernight which is a little bit cruel. But that's French bread gaming for you. But regards, with regards to the mana system in this game, I don't know what constitutes as a lazy system. I think it's interesting. I think a mana system that allows you to overspend and then as a result causes you to have the gauge inaccessible for a little while and then eventually come back. I think it works really well. I also like that it gives you full resources at the start of the round and I like how a bit like Tekken, you know how it gives you a rage art at 30% health. I can't remember exactly how it works but I think by activating your rage art thing at 30% I think it increases the mana gauge to 200. So I, I disagree on the mana system being basic. I think there's a lot here that has yet to be discovered. Well, nu nuance-wise, you know, in tournaments we'll see people using stuff that's like, oh yeah, that's, that's a cool way to use it. It is going to be, there's going to be less divergent gameplay compared to, you know, retro fighters, presumably. But I think there will be still, I think there still will be stuff to be discovered that'll be fun to see. Combo routes are the same. That I can't comment on because I don't, I don't really know enough about the combos. You might be right there. I'm only sticking to the like the one combo that I can figure out. But I can imagine that if there is a way to get maximum optimal damage from combos, 
people are just going to do that one all, all the time. So, unfortunately, I can't comment on that. Footsies don't exist beyond press roll. I want to disagree, but at the same time, that's how I've been playing the game today. I can't remember who was I was talking to Zombit on Twitter, who actually gave me the, that advice earlier today. When I said, how do I close the gap on zoners? He's like, well, you gotta, you gotta roll at the right time. And I, I knew that from the previous stream, but I hadn't really put it into practice very much. But definitely if someone throws out a special and it's punishable, you, you need to know that anyone can roll anytime and for free. So the question is, is that all there is to the neutral game in this? And I don't know. I don't know. I hope it's not. I hope that's, I hope there's more to it. You know how Street Fighter, you're often putting out pokes and buffering specials in and hoping that they lead to combos. I'm kind of grateful that it doesn't just come down to Street Fighter V style neutral because, I mean, come on, it it's fun, but look, that's Street Fighter V. Just leave it in Street Fighter V. But it's a good question about the footsies in this game, and I'm curious to what you guys think because I don't know a whole lot about it. Oh, Awakening, it's called Awakening thing. The net code is good, but it doesn't keep me from playing three or four matches due to getting bored from a visual standpoint. That sounds like two separate points to me. The net code is good, and I think that's where the point ends. It's just, the net code is good. About you feeling bored from a visual standpoint, I mean the game looks flashy. I don't know how long that will. I don't know how long that will last. It's true. Maybe after a month or two of playing this game, we'll be like, okay, whatever. The special cinematic specials. I don't really need to see this anymore. Whatever. What I'm hoping in the neutral, going back to what you said from being bored from a visual standpoint, as a spectator, I'm hoping to see more accidental situations a bit like you know guilty gear rev 2 you know how they always talk about how like the improvisational aspect of it is really important and being able to like fluidly launch into a combo from any situation i'm hoping we see a lot more of that like whoa they reacted with exactly the right move that would convert i think i believe the word is conversion not the conversion of white damage into into mp i'm talking about like actually turning a, a stray hit into a combo. I'm hoping I'm hoping that aspect of the game becomes quite interesting, but I haven't really watched enough matches, so I don't know. Would have been better as a tag fighter. I disagree. I disagree that it would be better as a tag fighter because once something becomes a tag fighter, all the other mechanics become second fiddle. Do you know what I mean? Second violin, as opposed to the one who gets to do the solos. In, in a game that's a tag fighter, the tag mechanic becomes like the whole game. I'm not an expert in tag fighters and versus style games is absolutely not my forte. But when I played Power Rangers, I thought, okay, these characters are not that interesting. I don't really care about these special moves, but the fact that it's a tag fighter makes it kind of wild and crazy. Where Marvel versus Capcom, I'm pretty sure that the the tag aspect is is a big part of what makes that so much fun. Dragon Ball Fighters as well. But if you take the tag fighter aspect out of Dragon Ball Fighters, what is it really? It's, you're, you're drilling down through these auto combos and super super dashing. I'm not saying it's it's not deep. I'm saying there is a mana uh, the mana system is here. And I think turning this into a tag fighter would just kind of reduce the importance of all the other features. I think there's enough finesse in them, personally. I don't know what Team Gauntlet means, by the way. OTG stuff is too punishing. That might be true. Um, I've only been watching Twitter videos of people posting OTG stuff. I'm hoping that the OTG stuff that's overpowered, I'm hoping that gets balanced. I don't think... I think it can kill a game if it's, like, clearly... The single, what do they call them? TOD, what's the TOD stand for? I hope that like single combos don't kill every time and I'm hoping that the OTG stuff, like I feel like it just loops forever and ever. And I think that can kind of make it a little bit monotonous. Anyway, I think I've covered all of the points and so now I want to check out what you guys say. Spoiled by third strike. If it doesn't have something like a parry, I'm disappointed. I'm spoiled by Undernight. Every time something doesn't have something game changing like the grid system, then I'm like, is this game unique enough? I don't want to play this. So I understand being by spoiled by stuff. I wonder if the DFO community cares about this game. I don't know, but I don't know if it really matters. I don't think... I don't feel like that's the 
the goal here. I don't think the goal is to convert people to fighting game players. I think the goal is to bring more people into DFO through another genre, which is generally what I think the plan with Grand Blue Fantasy Versus was. I don't think I don't think the goal was ever to convert <laughs> Grand Blue Fantasy MMO players into or well, the mobile game players into fighting gamers. I think the goal was let's expand this franchise until we've got everything. We've got the mobile game, we've got the RPG, which I think was partly made by Platinum Games, and then they sent it back over to Psy Games. And then they've got GB Versus, and they're just going to be present in every genre, which is very powerful because then you become a Final Fantasy, then you become a Disney, then you become a Ghibli. You just become present everywhere. Not Ghibli. That was a bad example. <laughs> After three days, people are already complaining about the game. Oh, come on. They were complaining on day one as well, right? Oh, by Tag Fighter, you meant to lose and then play as the next character on the team? Okay. That could be very interesting. That could be very interesting. I don't think it would change the game very much, though. I think the number of people who would drop it just because they don't want to learn two characters would be too great, and it would be better off just keeping it as one character. With King of Fighters, it's different because although the characters are important and they have different ways to be played generally everyone is just playing KOF <laughs> they're running they're short hopping they're anti-airing they're rolling and evading and yes the characters have unique moves but not like Guilty Gear like Guilty Gear every matchup is a completely different game KOF you can learn three characters in that game because the game plan is not wildly different, in my opinion, between the characters. But again, I might be wrong. I might be wrong. But this has been a really fun discussion and definitely one worth having because personally, I'm very interested to know how long the hype will last for this game. So if you are not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, be sure to check out the latest videos. There's, there's been a video every single day this week, I think. If you're not already on the Discord, we have created a room for DNF Duel where you can come and hang out and talk about DNF Duel and hopefully just give me advice and tell me how to play the game because I have no idea. Also, if you're not following me on Twitter, you can do so there. And if you're not already following on Twitch, click follow. It's free to do so. And hopefully you get a notification when streams happen. I'll see you all in the next Nihon Gamer video and or stream.